I quickly saw this. Did you guys see this? Oh, we pick up. What's that? Super chat. Smash your fitness goals, Oz. Bless up. Oh, yeah. Big up. Big up. Miss um, MDB. Was it MDB? Sorry, bro. I missed your name there. MDBZ fam. Fan. Yeah. So big up MDBZ fan for the super chat. I appreciate you, my friend. For the super chat. I appreciate Yeah. I'm going to smash him and I'm going for it. Um, this is anyway. I, it was a plan anyway, setting set in stone. So you know, I've done it many a times. So the the goal, the the main goal here isn't to lose the weight because I've done it before. But obviously, I got to do that. The main goal is to sustain it the whole year because I've had. I can. I think even some of you guys, you can check back some of my old videos, like you know, from like twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one. You can see how I kind of got up and down, up and down. So yeah, big up MMA nut. Big up, big up. So. The goal is this year, it's just to hold, it's just to kind of steady that the whole time. So to be 200, the, the main goal is like, I don't want to go over 220. I want to be within the two, 200 and 220 mark all year round. So that'd be good. So most of the year. So we're already three months in. So from April onwards, I'll be down and then, you know, spend most of the year within that range. It should be blessed. Anyway, quickly moving on. Um, to kind of expound on that topic of being fat and stuff. Have you guys seen this? This is hilarious. You see this picture? So Brendan Shaw looked at this picture um, with him, Callan, and Burt Kreischer. And the caption says, Burt Kreischer's episode drops on Monday. We laughed so hard. Brian Callan responds to a Louis C.K. bit. I legit had to leave the room or I was going to pass out. Remember I said before how I got annoyed at this whole like, no, I understood why some people would get annoyed at Burt about that line he does about, oh, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. Oh, my God, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass out. Because I think most normal average guys who kind of work a normal average job they basically look like Bert but they don't get to live Bert's lifestyle where he essentially gets to live in this state of arrested development right he's kind of got the Peter Pan syndrome he never wants to grow up even though he's like an adult with two kids who are like you know I think they're teenagers are going to university or something right he's like an adult frat boy and he just kind of drinks and does whatever he wants to do and his wife is basically like he's a He's kind of he's kind of mother or something, right? It's a bit of a weird relationship there. But he basically has to live a life that they could never live. And he just enjoys the luxury of just being this kind of free spirit that gets to do what he does. And I was wondering to myself, like, I wonder if him constantly saying, I'm going to pass out. Oh, my God, I was laughing so hard. I was doing so hard. Because, you know, that's the only part of his life you kind of hear from him, talk about with enthusiasm. Maybe that's one of the things that kind of turns people off him in some ways. But anyway, it's just a thing I was noting. The funny thing about the picture isn't but my analysis on what Bert's like. The funny thing is the fact that they're all freed and posing. Bert's known for taking his t-shirt off. Brian's got his t-shirt off. And guess the one person who doesn't have, who doesn't have their t-shirt off? Brendan Shaw. Brendan Shaw's the one person who didn't want to take his top off. And it's, the, it's so funny because he would be that kind of guy, right? He's the former athlete. He's the former stud. The other day he was telling us that he could bench press, what was it, like 320 pounds 20 times. Um, he makes it seem like, you know, if you would have put the effort in, you would have made it in this and made it in that. Um, He's really critical of certain fighters and stuff. Like just like a really heightened sense of his um, athletic capabilities, right? But for some reason, he feels too insecure to take off his top next to two regular guys. Two regular guys who don't mind taking the top off of the attention next to an actual athlete who performed at the highest levels, right? UFC, did some of your NFL stuff, supposedly is a big beast in the gym. And he's uncomfortable taking his top off. He's kind of like the guy, the kid at the swimming pool, who gets a t-shirt off, t-shirt on. And I remember being that kid, that little chubby kid in school. And actually, when you go to swimming pool, what you realize, especially once you get older, is that actually keeping your t-shirt on at the pool when you're a little bit chubby actually makes more people look at you. No one really cares. It's like going to the gym. If you go to the gym and you're a bit big and you actually are super meek, and you're acting like you don't know what you're doing, and you're really shy, and you look like you're going to cry at any moment because you're getting frustrated and overwhelmed, people are going to start looking at you. But if you legitimately go in there with like a, you know, with like a, hey, let me just take it calmly. You, you kind of do your research on your phone. You know what workouts you're going to do. And you just approach it with a calm head. You don't get intimidated by people around you. Lifting bigger weights, you just say, this is my journey, and you go on. People don't even notice you're there. But actually, wearing a T-shirt like this, but you know, standing next to, and not wanting to take your top off makes you stand out. Same way that if you went to a gym and you're acting loads of really clunky, it make you stand out too. But I just find this hilarious. This image is absolutely hilarious. The one guy who's the athlete is like, nah, I'm not taking it off. I feel uncomfortable. Let's take your top off. Let's see what you're working with. Let's see what all that um carnivore dieting does, all of that alleged riding the bike or the thick boy bike club, all that alleged um what else? 
the alleged black belt, the alleged flipping, you know, fucking bench pressing 400 pounds, 41 times, whatever he said he could do, which is better than most NFL combine, um, you know, people and champions or winners. I don't know how you can answer that shit. Like, come on, let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. But hey, what a funny, funny guy. We were saying in the chat, um, Mr. Singh said quarantine did me dirty. Yeah, quarantine did me dirty too, Mr. Singh. Honestly, quarantine did me super dirty. But I also can't blame it. I think it's a bit of a crux. But to be fair, before quarantine um, or before pandemic, actually, um, most of us were, I, me particularly, I was going to work every day, isn't it? Well, I think most of us was, right? But I was going to an office. There was no working from home. So that involves going. And then also it kind of limited the, cause my time to have free time to do stuff. So I would usually wake up really early to go to the gym or I'd go for a run after work. Or sometimes I will take my running stuff to work, listen to this, and I would run back home to get my miles in and run back home from like my office where I worked at before to my doorstep was maybe like six to eight miles. And I'll do that maybe three times a week or maybe sometimes on a Friday or like whatever. So either three times or one time a week to get my miles in on top of going to the gym on top of doing Muay Thai and stuff. That's what I was doing. On top of kind of the daily commute and moving around. So that was good. Then as soon as the pandemic hit, suddenly all the gyms are closed. And then guess what happens? It's the first time in, I've ever done this. Ever done this. Imagine this. The first time I ever did this back then. I was ordering Uber Eats and Deliveroo sometimes twice, sometimes three times a day. That's how bad it got. And it's no surprise that I ballooned up. You know what I mean? It's like, that's just common sense. Like you stay at home, you're not allowed to go outside and then you're ordering delivery, like Uber Eats and Deliveroo once, twice, sometimes three times a day. Imagine how bad that is. <laughs> that's only going to end one way. It's only going to end one way. It's horrible, 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 horrible. So that kind of, it was like a, it was like a domino effect. You know what I mean? You spent that year and of course, you know, everyone was sad. I was sad as well. You lose, you know, you lose what was it we all lost like what two years of our lives and stuff um some friends move on and change interests and so you lose people in your friendship group your interests maybe change you get a little bit macabre i don't know it just it messes everyone up but it's not an excuse don't get me wrong but it is a reality it's not an excuse you know you still need to get back on it and do your thing because i know there are people out there like i knew in the in the apartment block that i lived in um there were people certain guys especially gym guys was this one guy that i know he went you know we, we've got i live in this apartment block we've got like a communal garden it's not really a garden it's just like a bit where like flowers and stuff it's kind of crappy it's low okay cool let me update the volume can you hear me now is it, is it louder cool, cool, cool i think it's louder than red so we live in this apartment block and there was this guy who during the pandemic basically um brought what did he brought out uh he brought all his gym equipment from his house i think or you know, he just brought gym equipment and he put it in the flipping communal area and he just covered it with some tarp when it was raining but he was working out on there he had like a bench press and everything like working doing bicep curls everything on there and to get cardio he would be he'd be running up and down the stairs of our building so we got like 11 floors or 12 floors i think and he, he'd be running up the, down the stairs every day during the pandemic. So there were people getting it in. And I saw people in the morning sometimes during the pandemic going for runs and stuff. But, you know, when the gym closed, it kind of just knocked my motivation. Or maybe it was an excuse me to get lazy. But I know people that were running. Like that guy was running up and down the flight stairs 12 to get his cardio in, doing workouts outside with like, you know, steel plates and stuff, like really getting it in. So um, there was no excuse, but it did rob you about two years. But I do remember those dark days, man, of having, or sometimes saying hi to the same flipping delivery driver. Like, he recognizes you. Like, you're like, oh, you feel so disgusting. Like, you're like, here you go, man. Like, Thank you. Like, just taking it. Like, you feel you feel ashamed. You know what I mean? You feel ashamed <laughs> that you're making this poor man go back and forward from KFC, Burger King, or McDonald's to get you stupid shit. Like, you feel, oh, you feel so gross. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's a tip. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, moving on. Oh, what a dark time, man! I don't want to think about that again, man. I, I, I'm back on my, I'm back on my Kate Moss shit. No, I don't, wanna, I don't want to think about that anymore. Um, Emmanuel Santos says, "How's cycling in London? Pretty good, to be fair. I'm not gonna lie. Cycling in London is pretty good. Um, the area that I live in is not the best because I live in the hood, so I'm not really in like the centre trendy bit. But the trendy bits of London, they're pretty good in terms of having good bike lanes." Um, like that, not like because before we used to have bike lanes where it's just a road and they just paint a line there, but now we have like dedicated ones where like it's kind of like it, it reminds me of like um Holland where it's sort of like it's a dedicated path with like a pavement so no cars can come on there. So it's just you and bikes. It's really cool. Um, and usually if you're if you're cycling around, 
If you're cycling on a, on a commute, it's really good too because there's loads of people in London cycle, especially nowadays with the economy being a bit crap. People want to save money. Must have a cool actually. I actually bought, I don't have it here, but it's over there. I actually bought a whole bunch of inner tubes to replace mine because my bike flipping uh, messed up. So um, anyway, 